I'm Connor Glass. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. Uh, I went through medical school and then I went to Johns Hopkins to do a research fellowship in plastic surgery focused on limb trauma and these reconstructive surgical techniques that you can do to help people that have different types of injuries to both treat their neuropathic pain but also to help them control prosthetic limbs, uh, at least in the setting of amputation. But while I was there, I recognized that there was this big gap in technology in a commercial environment, specifically within this field of amputation and prosthetics and robotic assistive devices. And so during the research fellowship, uh, came up with this concept with some other co-inventors of this implantable muscle machine interface that harnesses electrical activity from the residual muscle in an amputation stump or in an injured limb and using uses that electrical activity to drive control of a prosthetic limb or an exoskeleton or something like that. And so we came up with this minimally invasive implant that can record that electrical activity and then use that wireless signal to control in real time a prosthetic limb or some robotic appendage or assistive exoskeleton. So we exist in a world where there's all this wireless technology and smart devices, smart computers, phones, um, Siri, all, all these different things exist. And that also exists within robotics. The challenge is how do you allow people with these injuries to still have uh, interactions with wireless technologies without them being tethered to it? So you want them to be able to wirelessly control these things uh, so that they don't really have to think about it. And so that it almost becomes a part of their body. In our particular case, it's a prosthetic limb. And so you want it to be very low latency, very secure uh, and high, high speed, which I, I already said. But uh, And so utilizing the infrastructure that's been created through commercial IoT uh, has actually given us a leg up on being able to accomplish our goals of real-time control of prosthetic limbs and, and different robotic systems. So I wouldn't be doing this unless I thought that the technology had really broad sweeping implications for society, uh, it starts out with helping all these patient demographics that have different types of uh, limb disability, allowing them to get back to their normal lives, uh, or even perhaps in some cases surpassing what they could have been done before. You can imagine a world where robotic prosthetics are actually superior to a biological limb. Uh, and so eventually it might come a time where a person that has an amputation can have a limb that's better and stronger than what they would have had otherwise. You're not wearing a whole bunch of sensors, yet you're still able to have seamless interactions with the world around you. And the way to actually make that a reality is through minimally invasive safe implants that give you that capability, but allow you to not have to wear anything. I think that IoT is such an incredible field with so many potential implications for society. Uh, and, and one thing that I'm passionate about with respect to technological advancement is trying to make really significant leaps in technology. I encourage people to dream big and really envision a future that you want for society, whether that's through medical implants or through you know IoT or whatever it might be, and to really go about trying to enact that vision for the future. I think you have this one life to accomplish whatever you can, and so you might as well dream big and, and really go after it uh, rather than trying to make incremental improvement. So I encourage people that are developing or creating new technologies to really be aggressive about what they're trying to create, because that's what's really exciting and, and helps you get out of bed and, you know, in the morning.